All right, guys, just going to kind of make a quick video today. I'm going to make a few more of these planters that we've had for a while. Um, this one here in particular we've had for, I think, six or seven years. And uh, my wife wants a couple more, and I have someone else that wants one. So I'm going to show you how we make them. All right, so the interior of the planter, we use these square, just these plastic square planters you can get. Walmart sells them sometimes, Menards. Um, you know, they're, they vary in price depending on what kind of thickness you get, but usually they're, you know, 10 bucks to 15 bucks for just the plastic insert. So I'm gonna do a couple for us today that are larger like the one over here. Um, that one's 18 inches by 18 inches. Okay, so my planter's 18 inches uh, square. And the wood I'm using is just a dog ear cedar fence board, and it's five eighths of an inch thick. So the way we're building these, there'll be one overlap on each end. So we need to compensate for the thickness of the board. We're gonna add five eighths of an inch to that. So that puts us at 18 and five eighths. Uh, but I wanna give us some play too, so it's not really tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it an even 19. That gives us a little bit of play around the whole planter, around, yeah, around the whole plastic planter. So I made a mark here at 19 inches on the on the board and I just kind of want to show you kind of how I came to what I'm going to use here. Let me get down here a little closer. So using the speed square, I kind of want to try to decide what I'm going to do here for my angle cut. I know my planter has about five or six degree taper on it from the top to the bottom. I'm going to do something uh, just a little bit less so I know it'll fit. So we're going to go, I think around four or five degrees. So on your speed square, if you want to kind of figure out what you're going to have on your actual speed square, you'll use your pivot point here. And how that works is you set your straight edge on top of your board and you pivot your square, sorry, pivot your square on that corner like that. And you read the degrees over here. So if we do a four degree angle, you can kind of see hit four degrees right here where my thumb is, by my thumb. And then you can mark that with your, with your square. Hold on, I'll do that real quick. So there's our, that's what our cut line is going to be there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line this up in the saw and set myself a stop block I'm over here on this side of the saw so I can make this cut repeatable. Since I'm making more than one of them, I'm going to, I'm going to cut a few at a time. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so I just clamped myself a block here on the end so I can slide the wood up against it and make that cut repeatable. But since the angle obviously wouldn't be the same, we're gonna, I'm gonna cut one side and then I'll flip the board over to the opposite side and we'll cut that other angle. So as you can see, when I'm running this through, I'll make this cut and then I flip the board over and slide it down to my stop block down here and I make the next cut. So this one's too short, obviously. I'll save this for the bottom section because it might be long enough. Okay, so now that we have some cut, I'm gonna cut a couple more still, but when we set up our next cut, this is our top section. So the top was 19 long, as you can see here. And the bottom, we need to measure. So what I like to do 
is hold yourself. It's really hard to, to pull a dimension off of an angled piece of wood. So hold yourself on one inch mark. Uh, we call that just burning an inch. So we're gonna burn an inch and hold it right on the one inch mark like this, and then get your dimension on the other end. So you can see here, I'm holding, I'm burning an inch and I'm right at 19 and a quarter. But since we burned an inch, it's actually 18 and a quarter. So we need to make our next cuts 18 and a quarter long on the top. So we'll set our stop block in and make our next set. And then we'll continue that down as many tiers high as you want to go. So we're going to do six, five or six. We'll see how it looks. Um, so we'll just keep doing that until we get down to the bottom. Now, make sure after you cut your next one, um, you check to make sure it matches up with this one. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so this already has, this is a leftover piece that I have a cut on already. So we're going to measure from the, from the point here. 18 and a quarter. Grab your speed square. Mark my angle too to help line my blade up. That just kind of helps. I can't really get my blade all the way back to the corner, so this just kind of helps get my line. So I'm on my line there, and I'm gonna move my stop block now to match. Now, before we cut anymore, we want to make sure and check against our last piece. So this is the one I just cut. And here is the, the first ones we cut. So you just want to make sure that your, your joints line up. And that's pretty much perfect. I don't know if you can see that or not. So we'll, we'll cut. Um, if you're just making one, you'll cut four of these, obviously. But I'm making a couple, so we're going to cut eight of them. And you'll just continue that on down the planter, basically. Okay, so here we have them all cut out. So you got them stacked up, ready to go here to be assembled. And then we need to still um, rip down a couple pieces here to use for our, our edge edge pieces that are gonna kind of hold everything together. And um, I'm gonna do that with a table saw. So I'm gonna get that out now. We'll get those cut and ripped, ready to go. Then we'll start assembling them. Okay, I'm gonna rip two different widths here. And if you don't have a table saw and you don't wanna do this part, you can just get some like inch and a half or two inch wide strips of cedar for the, for the corners if you wanna do that instead. They sell those at the hardware store normally, or at least they do at my lumber yard. Um, but I'm gonna do um, some strips at two inches wide and some strips at an inch and a half wide um, since they'll be overlapped in the corner so that the same width from the side. And I'll kind of explain that more as we assemble. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now with a table saw. I'm gonna go ahead and get some, uh, get my respirator on though because the cedar stuff really bugs my sinuses. So I'm gonna try to mask up really well. So basically I cut one wider than the other. So this one I actually ended up making this in about an inch and three quarters. And this one, I actually subtracted five eighths off of that. So they'd be the same width, but this way when you do your, do your corner like so, it's the same width from both sides. So that's why you'd rip one wider than the other. Now, if you don't have a table saw and you just have some furring strips that are this wide, you know, it doesn't really look that bad to have a little wider on one side than the other. Um, this is just kind of a little extra touch. So let's get to putting these together now.
Okay, I'm just going to be using a nail gun to put this together. Um, this is just an 18 gauge nailer. It does staples too. I'm going to use staples today, just the narrow quarter inch wide crown staples. These are inch and a half long. Um, you could use, you could just do finished nails if you wanted to with a hammer. And just what I would suggest if you do that is pilot your holes. It makes it a little easier. Get you like a 16 inch drill bit. Drill you some holes first. Um, I will say the pneumatic nailer makes this job way faster. If you're making making a lot, you know, um, if you have access to it, I'd recommend it. All right, so we're just gonna start off. Hold on just a second, let me readjust the camera. Okay, uh, you will notice, and I didn't mention this before the video started, and I forgot this since last time I built one. When you get the fence planks, they're not always exactly the same width. Sometimes they're off about an eighth of an inch. So the last time I did it, I ripped them all down. I didn't this time, and I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. It's, it's a pretty small, you know, gap. Just make sure on the first one, since it's your top, just make sure your tops are lined up. just like that so since this one is butted up against the inside of this one you're gonna do the opposite on the other on the other side that way your 18 inches inside stays the same so as you can see we're we're butted up to the inside of this one so we're gonna be on the outside on this edge hopefully you can see that Okay, just to kind of show you up close here, so you can see each board comes up to the inside of the next board. Comes up to the inside. This one goes on to the inside of the next board, and that loop completes inside, and that's your loop. So that way, you know, our, our boards are 18, and uh, I'm sorry, our planter is 18 inches, but we made our board a little longer, so we want to make sure you stay you stay staggered like this, otherwise you'll be too short one direction. So just make sure you're just kind of alternating corners like that. And then basically all you gotta do is put them all together that way. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna be doing both planners. So I'm gonna do a time lapse and just kind of get all these nailed together. And I'm gonna stack them up behind me as I go here. And do something I didn't do and start assembling your bottom ones first. That way you can stack them up because I'm doing the top first. Wasn't thinking. So mental note, next time make sure the battery on the camera is charged all the way. Uh, I lost it there, so you get to miss me stacking them here, but no big deal. So this is what we ended up with, and I've already, while I'm waiting on the camera to charge, I went ahead and cut some pieces. I'm just gonna show you how I did this. So you can see, this is what you're gonna end up with, just stacked on here like this. We're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how I did my template for my side pieces here. And let me get the camera set up here just a second. So go ahead right off the bat and cut a four degree angle on the end of this board like we have been on the rest of these. So keep that same angle. So you're gonna set the four degree angle on the floor and then you're just gonna take your pencil and you're gonna mark a line across it and then go cut that. So then after that's done, you can use that as your template for the rest of your pieces. So just lay it on top. Keep this one as like a master template, lay it on top of it on the board and mark it. And keep doing that and just make sure you use this one every time so you have you're not getting off a little bit over like you know eight or nine pieces after you've done that do that with your your wide piece and your narrow piece and then we'll start putting together so next thing we're going to do is take our narrow piece and our wide piece and we're going to lay them on top of each other and we're going to we're going to nail them together with the air nailer just to make a nice corner piece like this and then this will be nailed onto the outside corners of the planters so we'll do that now once you get them here, it's kind of easier, I think, to kind of line them up on the corner. 
um, together and then take them to the workbench to nail them. That way you make sure your your angles are correct. Um, I know it seems simple, but when you get in a hurry, sometimes you make mistakes and this just makes it easier. All right, now we're just gonna nail the corner on. Make sure everything's lined up nice and tight before you do like stuff like this. And again, you want your wider side on the ingrain piece. That way you have a nice big area to nail to. Okay, so that corner's done and we'll just do the other four the same way. When we get done, we'll put a lip on the inside with some wood to support the planter and then it'll be done. Okay, so now we're gonna see where we wanna put our planter at. So you can see we fit down inside here and I'm looking at this, I think I wanna be probably, probably about an inch down below the top lip so you can't really see it. Um, now optionally, you could have built this to where this set on top if you wanted to see the planter like this, where it kind of just sat on the top lip and made this, you know, narrower right here and right here as well. But I want it inside where you can't see the planter. So eyeballing it, looks like I'm gonna put that about an inch below the top edge here. So what I'll do is I'll cut a few pieces that I can fit in here. They don't need to be perfect, just enough to hold the lip of the planter. Um, I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll use another piece about an inch thick just to kind of make my spacing at the top and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. All right, I'm gonna use a little wood glue on these so they have a little extra hold. This is just Gorilla Glue. And this is my, just my uh, block to get my distance right from the top. And these are probably gonna be long enough that they shoot through, I'll have to cut them off. set our planter down in there. Like so.